Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. And we've had a little shift in barrels path and strength forecast. We'll get to that in a second. First, 96L just east of barrel is still moving in the same general direction. Not much has changed in terms of the forecast. Still a 70% chance NHC is giving this of forming into a depression in the next seven days, 40% in the next 48 hours as it continues on its western path. And then late last night before midnight, we had Tropical Storm Chris, which was born just before it went on shore. Chris is an afterthought now and just barely made Tropical Storm status. But Jeff, that does make three named storms in the Gulf or, well, yeah, I guess you could say the Gulf, but three named storms for the month of June. Yep, we did have a crisp form, you know, just right there in the extreme southwestern Gulf. Again, that that area down there is just very favorable. Sometimes when you get when you get those lows to uh, develop with the with the shape of the coastline and everything, so you can get those situations to spin up. And so, yep, three named storms in in the month of June for twenty twenty four. Yeah, and. Taking a look at barrel, barrel's been downgraded to a category three, but looking at the uh, eye there, Jeff, it may be going through a uh, eye re recycling period. And it still uh, is throwing a lot of strong convection out there, especially around the eye wall, and is expected to wreak havoc on the windward islands today with high winds and surf. And then it continues its track on through the Gulf of Mexico, and it shows that it's weakening a little bit sooner now than yesterday's uh, um, strength forecast, and the path has shifted a little bit to the south. Still looks like Jamaica needs to be ready for this one for Wednesday afternoon, and then when it gets to Belize on Friday morning, it will uh, move on to the Yucatan and likely weaken some when it gets into the Gulf, but it is showing to be in the Gulf now by Saturday morning, early Saturday morning. But again, this track shifting, you know, it showed hints of this of this storm turning north yesterday, but that's kind of changed back to the original path, which just keeps it a little bit further south and, and maybe just touching the Gulf of Mexico before moving into Mexico. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty again here in the Western Caribbean and, and what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. You know, we've, we've been kind of talking about this for the last couple of days. I'm going to go back to the infrared here for a second. Um, Barrel is, is completing or has completed this morning what we call an eye wall replacement cycle. And so we had a very small eye yesterday, about 10 miles across. That eye kind of collapsed overnight and we've had this new outer ring of thunderstorms and, and deep deep convection, we call it, form. And so that's kind of what we call an outer eye wall. And that is now starting to contract. And so you can see barrel now with the big blow up of thunderstorms and the, and the eye kind of appearing again, but much larger. And so you temporarily you'll get a weakening with these replacement cycles. And then you can go into a, a re-strengthening phase. And unfortunately, it looks like this is happening right at the time, uh, potentially for barrel to re-strengthen a little bit as it comes into the southern Windward Islands. Interestingly enough, Barbados over here, uh, kind of on the northern edge of the tropical storm force winds, has gusted to tunnel 70 in the last hour. And so the other thing that happens with these IRA replacement cycles is the wind pill tends to expand outward. So this is how the storms kind of grow in size. And we have seen this morning, we got two aircraft heading in there now, so they'll give us a good idea of what's happening. But we have seen this morning that these hurricane force winds that extended outward only about 10, 15 miles yesterday, uh, now are extending outward about uh, 35 miles from the center. And so Two couple things that happened. You can see the wind field here. So you can see the islands that are going to be impacted by the wind field and the hurricane force and the really strong winds uh, right around that eye, only about 35 miles out. And so it, the, the center is going to have to get very close to any one of these islands to actually get the worst conditions on a land location. Um, but interestingly enough, like I said, Barbados up here, uh, kind of on the edge of the tropical storm force winds gusting to 70 this morning. So let's talk a little bit about the the track here, and, and I, I want to say a couple of things. Um, you know, first, you can see the, the kind of the guidance cluster is in fairly good agreement through the Central Caribbean. We're going to see uh, barrels speed up a little bit. 
Um, and that could potentially have some issues with the intensity forecast. And I'll get to that in a second. But you can see a good agreement here. And then we start to see some disagreement or divergence as we get into the Western Caribbean and then into the Southern Gulf of Mexico. Um, the ensemble mean has shifted further to the south overnight. The GFS and the European have shifted further to the south overnight. This, these model runs, these are the, the last evening model runs, did have the reconnaissance data yesterday, the first reconnaissance flights that got out there. So could this be, you know, some of the models getting some of that good data in there? And they they are picking up on this shift a little bit further south from the track, or could, or could it be what we typically can see sometimes? Is these these models kind of bounce around? So one run they'll shift this way, the next one they'll shift back to the north, and kind of the best course of action in this type of a situation is is to kind of continue with the continuity of the forecast and don't make big shifts in the forecast. But you can see here the the black dots is the official Hurricane Center forecast is north of the black line, which is the mean of all of these models. Um, so it's, it's north of that. It's well north of the European and the GFS um, grouping down here. So um, if this continues today, and that's what the Hurricane Center likes to look at, is this a trend? Is this something that's going to continue? Um, if it does, they will start to make some uh, adjustments to the south here with the track. The other thing I want to point out is you see this kind of sharp turn here to the north on the ensemble mean in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is this is a little bit overdone. This is an artifact of these ensemble tracks that are coming further to the north or lasting longer, whereas the tracks that are going into Mexico are terminating at landfall. So the storm weakens and dissipates. And these tracks are skewing the mean further to the north or to the right here because they're going out further in time to come further up to the northwest. And so while this looks, oh my goodness, we're going to see the storm turn to the north here on the mean, that's not really the case. And in fact, if, if these tracks terminated at the same time, you would probably see this mean a little bit further here to the south and west, closer to what the uh, maybe the GFS is showing. And so there's still a lot of uncertainty past the Yucatan, even, even potentially on the Yucatan now, if we have to shift further to the south towards Belize. But does this even get into the Gulf of Mexico has, has now come into play this morning. The other thing, what condition does it come into the Gulf as? How weakened is it? What kind of uh, shape is the system in? The intensity of it? And then, like we've been talking about, where is this high pressure ridge over the southern United States in a trough that's going to be coming through the northern United States? And it, it appears this morning, anyways, that this high may be a little bit stronger here in the southern United States but I, it's just a, there's just a lot of uncertain, uncertainty still here in the southern Gulf of Mexico of, of what could happen as we get into um, this weekend. So uh, landfall somewhere around the Yucatan on Friday. This would, that would be what July the fifth, and then getting over to the potentially the southern Gulf of Mexico here as we get into uh, early in the weekend. The, the reason I'm showing this graphic is this is the consensus or the average of all of the guidance runs over the last several uh, model cycles. And the dark one here is the latest. The light blue is the, the further back in time. So this is the most current. This is further back in time. And you can kind of see the trend here was decently clustered. And then all of a sudden, um, last night's runs that came in have, have deviated pretty far here to the south. And so again, the first question is, is this a trend? Is this something that is going to shift even further south? Or are we going to see the next guidance cluster or the next models come in and, and be very similar to this? Or are they going to shift back a little bit northward where they've been? And so that's why the Hurricane Center doesn't make big adjustments to the forecast trend just because of one model cycle. And this is a really good example um, of waiting to see what happens today uh, potentially here if this shifts back to the north or if it stays down here, if it stays down here, uh, the trend is is definitely uh, in favor of, of a, a bigger threat down in this region and the lesser threat to the Gulf Coast. But again, we'll have to see that. And some of this is going to be the intensity. So you can see we're, we're, we're sort of kind of peaking. Um, the hurricane is probably going to peak later today or first thing tomorrow. And then it's, it's, it's kind of a question of how quickly does this weaken and fall off. There, there's certainly some factors in the Central Caribbean 
um, that do support weakening. And, and the biggest factor is going to be the forward speed. Hurricane's going to speed up, and that is going to induce some shear um, in the upper levels because of the fast forward motion of the surface. And the question is, does that inner core get disrupted um, and start to break down some? The global models are, are fairly um, on board with, with weakening and even rapid weakening as this gets over towards the Western Caribbean. And so we'll have to see the, the there's a couple of things, there's a couple of things that bring some uncertainty to this. Small, a small hurricane like we saw with Barrel yesterday tends to respond much greater to any negative factors that are applied to it. But since Barrel has grown in size some overnight, um, it'll, it will remain to be seen if the shear impacts the system as much as it would if it was a smaller system. So we'll just have to wait and see how disrupted it gets. Um, but you can see a kind of general weakening trend. The Hurricane Center is kind of up on the, the higher side of the guidance here. And the more it weakens, the more that, that, that system is going to be steered by the lower level flow. So the more it's going to go further to the west and even south of west in the Western Caribbean. And so that may be what some of the guidance is picking up on this morning, um, but it, it, it may not all be right if Beryl is able to kind of fight off some of that shear and, and maintain a more, a more coherent inner core as it goes through the Caribbean. So um, it's interesting, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday we kind of had a few more answers we thought in the Western Caribbean and today uh, some uncertainty has kind of crept back in uh, as we get into that with respect to both the track and the intensity. Yeah. yeah. And like, like we were talking about yesterday, Jeff, there are a lot of holiday plans being made for the upcoming 4th of July weekend. If any of those include the Yucatan Peninsula, Cancun, Cozumel, Belize, definitely want to check with your hotel and see what their plans are and what they advise for the storm. And if you're anywhere on the U S coast, Texas, Keep an eye on what's going on on a daily basis, especially in South Texas right now. The track may be looking like it would affect South Texas more than anywhere, South Padre Island, places like that. But anywhere along the, the coast, just stay in touch with what's going on and we'll keep you informed as well. You can share, subscribe and share our Weather Insights YouTube by clicking on the link and sharing and hitting the share and like button and um, the subscribe button and join us on the next Weather Insights podcast.